Oh, oh, one o'clock in Melbourne, Australia. Ms. Yes. Duke, how is, how is the weather there? Today is cool. I think yesterday was really hot, but huh. today it was really cold. So, is, uh, uh, yeah. Michael mentioned that Melbourne has these crazy weather changes. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds so, like, yeah, my hometown, Chicago. Okay. Yeah. So, tomorrow. Uh, yes. What happened is 12 degree, 21 and 12. Mm. High 21 and low is 12. And then next week, I think on Sunday, we will be 38 degree. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> It's that's strange because San Francisco, California has the really warm 22 degrees in the daytime and sunshine. But by about six o'clock, the fog comes in from the Pacific Ocean and it gets really cold. You have to wear a sweater and a ski parka. So it sounds like Melbourne and San Francisco are really similar. <laughs> All right. Well, we have 13 students and it's 1030. Shall we begin, Ms. Duke? Uh, yeah, we can start again. I think, okay. you know, and then, you know, you can have some time to get to know everyone. So my name I is so. Duke. Okay. So my name is Duke Fang. Uh, it's, it's my honor to introduce you, Teacher Brandon, uh, who will be teaching uh, our Oh, hello. Our course. <laughs> Ms. Duke has a technical problem. I hear it. <laughs> it's coming through in sound bites. <clears throat> uh, anyway. The basic writing. For, um, mm. And we have yeah, yeah. teacher's assistant, Mr. Tony. If everyone would like to say hello to Tony. Tony. All the students provided CVs or resume. Yeah. Could you give us your background, Tony? And then I'll do my introduction. <clears throat> yes, yeah, sure, teacher. Hello, teacher, and hello, everybody. My name is Ki. You can call me Tony. Uh, my major is nanoscience and the technology. I finished my BSc course two years ago. Currently, I am in uh, Ho Chi Minh City. Nice to meet you guys. Wonderful. And Tony helps me on um, Saturdays and Sundays, Tony, for some younger students' lessons um, in writing and um, in debate. Are you in the debate, Tony, or no, just the writing? Yeah, yeah just only writing, writing on Sunday. Okay. Yeah, I have a writing sample from one of the younger students, and I'll share that with the other students. So it's nice to meet everybody, as you can hear me talking to Ms. Duke. Um, you can use chats to get to know each other. Since you're adults, your chats will be uh, casual and formal, and that's perfectly okay with us. Uh, with the uh, younger students, the children, the chats are crazy, as Tony and I both know. The chats often have to do with pizza. It's very strange to me that in Vietnam, there seems to be some sort of pizza crazy thing going on right now. The young students age eight to 12 are obsessed with pizza. And I find that funny because, you know, I'm, my hometown is Chicago, Illinois in the USA, and they, they make really thick pizza. <clears throat> so pardon me, um, this week I'm struggling with a little bit of respiratory problem because in late February, Japan's climate changes and the weather has become very wet and cold and I have a history of asthma. I noticed four or five of you from your resumes, you have medical backgrounds and so you can hear in my voice, my, my breathing and my talking is a little bit struggling. So please uh, forgive me for that. Um, and uh, I hope we can progress without too many interruptions. Uh, let's see. Uh, Zoom is having uh, a problem. There we go. Okay. So I have the more. I'm not sure if we'll use the breakout rooms tonight. We'll have to see. Um, so my background, my name is Brendan McGowan. I am from Chicago, Illinois in the USA. Um, but I currently live in Hiroshima, Japan. I have lived in Japan since 1992. So this uh, March makes 32 years in Japan. It's a very long time. My friends back in Chicago say that I have an Asian personality these days. 
I find that very amusing. Uh, two years ago, I went to Saudi Arabia and my fellow teachers from England and America and Canada told me that I, uh, my, my character, my personality is more of a Japanese person than American these days. Again, I found that interesting. I suppose I've developed the, list, the ability to really listen to people. Let me do a quick uh, share screen to show you part of a Google slide thing so I can give you some background information on who I am and uh, what I do and all of that. Uh, I see uh, Zaolo, one moment. I'm going to just try this again with my prepared slides from Google for tonight. And oh dear, it uh, took me out of there. One moment, please. I'm going to have to start my slides in just a moment here. Apologies. <clears throat> and here we have our first session for adults. And I will do this in the slideshow format. One moment. I struggle sometimes with, um, with uh, technology. So apologies for that. So let me try share one more time. And uh, Chrome slide share and slideshow. Okay. Um, our first session for tonight for adults basic writing course. Now, in using this title, Adults Basic Writing Course, um, I'm a little bit apprehensive or hesitant to use it because looking through your CVs and resumes, uh, the majority of you have extensive experience in communicating with uh, people from all over the world. And um, so I, you know, basic, I, I hesitate to use that. I would almost think we're at an intermediate level to advanced level of writing expression, judging from your CVs and your resumes. So I promise I will adjust the course accordingly for you. Um, welcome to all of you. Thank you for taking this course. Um, so the background again, I'll read this out to you. Uh, my name is Brendan McGowan. I live in Hiroshima, Japan, with my wife, Makiko, who was born and grew up in Hiroshima. I have been an English conversation and writing instructor for over 30 years. I started my career in Hiroshima, Japan in 1992. And since that time, I have taught students in Korea, Taiwan, Saudi Arabia, Japan, and the USA. In each of these countries, I have encountered students of all different abilities from beginner to fluent speakers of English. My English composition mentors have been many and varied from colleges in America to nuns or sisters of Notre Dame Catholic order here in Hiroshima, Japan. <clears throat> I recently completed a course in editing writing for the IELTS or International English Language Testing System developed and administered by the British Council. The IELTS um, has some very interesting ideas for tonight's first homework assignment, I would like to use one of their topics because I really enjoyed their topics. And I noticed that quite a few of you have backgrounds in tourism, which is sensitive to local development in Vietnam and elsewhere. So we'll discuss this later as to why I chose that as a topic, um, tourism. But for tonight, uh, well, just a little bit more background. Um, my academic background, since you, all of you shared your academic background in the CV and resumes, I completed a Bachelor of History degree at Loyola University in Chicago. While I enjoyed history, I found philosophy and logic highly interesting, and I decided philosophy would be my minor area of study. Aristotle's logic system has been especially helpful in my critical writing as universally held ideas. Um, are often in contrast with specific or particular instances in the social sciences. So you can look through fallacies of logic to see if some um, report or something has some inconsistencies that can be critiqued. Um, I completed my Master's of Strategic and Security Studies at the University of Cork in the Republic of Ireland. I hold dual American European citizenship because my father was born in Ireland. Um, my master's thesis was on the prolonged Middle Eastern drought from 2000 to 2011. In researching this topic for two years, I had to read through numerous United Nations documents from agencies such as UN OCHA or the Office for Coordination of the Humanitarian Affairs. I noticed from many of your uh, CVs and resumes that you are involved in agriculture, <clears throat> indigenous agricultural pra uh, practices, tour 
tourism and its impact on ecosystems, um, tourism and its impact on indigenous populations. So many of the issues that you're dealing with in Vietnam with the indigenous populations and sensitivity to areas for tourist development and agriculture, I am familiar with from um, the Middle East and also from Taiwan. I lived in Taiwan uh, last year and indigenous areas and eco-sensitive areas were also important topics in Taiwan. But before we jump in, you know, I'm, this is the course structure. I want to do a get to know you so you can go around and introduce yourselves. And I see some people with their camera on, you're actively engaged. Um, some of the Vietnamese pronunciations will be di difficult for me. So, um, can I just ask, I noticed from my Lynn, um, you mentioned in your CV that you have contact with foreigners on an almost daily basis where you work. Um, could you introduce yourself, my Lynn? That's me, right? You call my name, right? Uh, nice to meet you all. My name is Mi Lin. Actually, people usually like uh, mispronounce my name is my Lin, but my name is Mi Lin. Healing, okay. Healing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. And no. uh, I'm 28 years old and I'm working for a local NGO in Vietnam and we uh, work towards uh, the right of ethnic group in Vietnam mm. uh, on land and forest and agriculture. Uh -huh. yeah, thank you. Mi Lin, when you worked with the local um uh indigenous cultures i i thought that was really interesting because um in taiwan i was a private tutor for two basketball stars on a female high school team and they came from the indigenous highlands of uh, taiwan and their cultures were really different and both young ladies had difficult problems in taipei city um dealing with the local education culture that was very uh uh, high level mathematics and science, and they had more traditional ways of education. So we discussed that in our English classes. So that's why, Milen, I was really interested to read that in your CV. Nice, very interesting. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank welcome. You so much. And of course, during the 10 week course, I'll have many questions about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Let's see, I saw the camera turned on for um, Mr. Fawn. Tien, and I'll let you talk because I'm having a little bit of difficulty breathing. So would you like to introduce yourself, Mr. Phan Tan? Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm very sorry because I'm just joy uh, lately. I have some uh, busy a little bit. Mm. Uh, I would like to introduce myself. I am Tien, so people call me money. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, and uh, I am 44 years old. Mm. I uh, have a uh, um, whole uh, bachelor and master degree in uh, geotechnical and ge geology engineering. I have on my my own company. Uh, okay. I have I uh, have uh, as um, opened my company from uh, since uh, two thousand ten, and I run my mm. own business um, for nearly fourteen years old. Yeah, I have four, four children and one wife. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> it's funny, Fantan, you said, and one wife. When I was a teacher in Saudi Arabia, some men had three wives and 38 children. And I found this really <laughs> interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a good joke, Mr. Fienton. Um in the chats I wrote geological engineering, is that correct? Yeah, I am uh, working in uh, uh, actually is a uh, um, uh, geology, engineering, and geotechnicals. I work in, uh, let's say, foundation and underground underground project. Yeah. Oh, okay. Underground Interesting. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, about four years ago, during the Corona pandemic, I was teaching online to a group of Vietnamese engineers living in the Japanese city called Mihara. And they did yes. concrete reinforcement of foundations for a Japanese yes. company. And they're going to introduce that into G into um, Vietnam. So that was my first work time working with uh, engineers. 
from Vietnam. Very interesting. Yeah. Actually, <coughs> okay. his, his work is a uh, like a uh, bit different with me because he he work in the uh, uh, reinforcement engineering, but I I always focus on soil mm. and soil and project underground. Oh, okay. That's very interesting. Okay. My Japanese father-in-law works for Mitsubishi and his specialty was bridges and tunnels. Um, he was uh, in charge of that. That's very interesting. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Money. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Money, you just put it up. That's very funny. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mr. Money. How about Yen CTH? I just like that. Yen CTH. Am I pronouncing that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yen CTH. Tell us, about, tell us about yourself. Okay. I'm eager to introduce myself to all of yeah. you. My full name is Gun Thi Hai Yen. So I uh, give the name is, uh, for you is Yen CTH. Uh, I am 35 years old. I am living in Hanoi. Um, I am. I have been married for ten years. I have uh, two daughters. My um, older daughter, my do my older daughter is ten years old, and uh, my little is six years old. I am working in the Vietnam Army. Oh, very yes. interesting. <laughs> yes, I think I am different to. Almost all of you here. Uh, yes. What do you do in the Vietnamese Army, Yen CTH? I'm a teacher. Oh, okay. What subject do you teach? Uh, I am um, teaching English basic. Okay, English. And yeah. so may I ask Yen CTH, you are 38 years old. So can I ask, what is your impression of the younger generation of Army recruits to the Vietnamese Army? Yes, thank you. Are my, they strong? <laughs> you know. uh, my um, older daughter is now uh, is your student here. Ah. Yeah, she studying debate on. Oh, debate. Okay, yeah. Yes, on uh, Sunday, on Sunday afternoon, okay. at uh, two p.m. in <laughs> Vietnam hour. Okay. Yes. It's a nicely behaved class, by the way, Yen C T H. <laughs> Yeah. The uh, the earlier class is a little bit wild, <laughs> but your daughter's class is very nice. <laughs> okay, all right, wonderful, great to hear it. Let me go down the line and see who else we have. Uh, we have uh, Ha, Mr. Ha Nigan from Ho Chi Minh City, who is thirty seven years old. Would you like to introduce yourself? <clears throat> Maybe you call me, right? Is it Ha? Yeah, my name okay. is Ha. Okay. Oh, my pronunciation uh, is not good. I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, hello, <clears throat> teacher, and all of you uh, to be here today. Um, my name is Ha. Uh, I'm living in Ho Chi Minh City, and now I'm working as a lecturer in uh, the Faculty of Finance and Banking. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, my teaching program focus on banking major and uh, I have a uh, I have a plan to maybe uh, next year or uh, next two years I will uh, study PhD program that's the reason why I try to try a lot of uh, English class to uh, improve uh, my skill yeah okay very good so banking and finance or just finance is it take uh, faculty of finance and banking, and uh, my major just banking, uh, okay, focus just banking. on banking system. Ah, okay, excellent, very good. Thank you very much. Let's yeah, see thank who you. else going down the line. Um, sometimes Zoom puts these out of order, so I apologies about that. Because if I skip somebody, please raise your hand and say, "Hey, you skipped me, right?" Uh, can we have our golf professional from Hanoi? I'm I'm curious to uh, introduce yourself. Just golf. <laughs> yes, thank you, teacher. 
Yeah, hello everyone. So my name hello. is Hong. Uh, so I live in Hanoi and just introduce, so I have at the moment currently one husband and two sons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So at the moment I'm working as sales and director uh, for a private company. So regarding my working experience, so mm -hmm. in my first 10 years, so I work for an NGO mm -hmm. in the alternate regions of Vietnam for mm -hmm. the development project funded by European countries mm -hmm. and after by studying in France. So I came back to Vietnam and work in, and uh, have worked in the private sector. And uh, I work for sales and marketing uh, since my uh, graduates from France. So especially uh, sales and marketing in the golf, in the hospitality and aviation sector. Mm. Yeah. So I can speak French and mm. Chinese. And for English, I learn by myself. So I follow the different courses and uh, YouTube. So uh, that's why my pronunciation sometimes is not really good. And okay. even for my writing also. So mm -hmm. I hope that thanks to your course mm -hmm. can improve my English. Thank you. Golf, what is your best foreign language? Is it English, Spanish, or French? French. Because French, I, oh, wonderful. Yeah. 14 years with French. Oh, wow. Wow, yeah. I was reading through the um, CVs and also for the younger students that there's still a strong connection between Vietnam and France. I was impressed by that. Um, it, the topic, the theme of French Vietnamese connections comes up often in the in the work that I read. So very interesting. Mm. Yeah, so in fact, at the moment for the Fra French, so we, we have uh, many projects in the culture, the, the French government support for the project in in culture. So that's Good. why we work with uh, yeah, French. the French. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, excellent. Very interesting. Okay, you are, nice work. Thanks, Golf. How about Lisa? It says Lisa Huang from Lisa from Huang, Hanoi from Hanoi. Lisa, are you there? Yes. Uh, Hello, Lisa. Yeah. Good. Uh, good evening, everyone. Could you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Is that I? I don't know. I have a problem with my camera. So oh, okay. yeah. So um, uh, my name is Hương and I am 47 years old and I'm working here in Hanoi in uh, an INGO, German INGO in a climate change project. Mm. And my project is uh, currently in uh, Kanto and Hue City. And yeah, I'm really want to go to this club for improve my writing skill because uh, in the past I also uh, have a TOEFL exam but in the past we don't have a such kind of writing skill so I don't have a lot of uh, writing skills so I really want to improve to my writing skills and uh, this is the reason I go to this class yeah thank you okay, Lisa well, well I'll try my best to help you with that that's very good your communication yeah, you. skills are fine. You're welcome. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. And so if we have Lisa, now we have Liz. That's my sister's name. So I'm uh, happy to see there's a Liz in our class. Thank you. Hello, Liz. How are you? Yes. Hello, teacher. <coughs> Could you hear me? Yeah. Now I can hear you. <coughs> yes. Uh, hello, teacher and everyone. Uh, my name is Tao and my English name is Liz. And I uh, 35 years old. Now I'm a lecturer in uh, Banking and Academy of Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And my focus is to uh, law, about law, mm -hmm. uh, special economy law. And okay. uh, I have married uh, uh, 10 years ago and I have two sons. And now I, uh, I, uh, mm -hmm. I want to participate in this lesson to uh, uh, expand my uh, writing English skill. Yes, uh, can you hear me? Okay. Help me? <laughs> yes, we okay. promise. There are a lot of banking and finance people and NGO people, so I'm going to have to structure some future lessons in the next 10 weeks to help you with banking uh, vocabulary. And I often use this word, I'll put it in chats. It's in my Google slides, collocations, 
Liz, do you know the collocations? Collocations. They're word combinations and they're specific to different areas like banking, finance, economics. Collocations can really help you because you take two big words and you put them together. And yeah, uh, yeah. so. Yes, I, I want to research about the law, but especially mm. the finance law and banking yeah. law. Yes. Mm. And I want to uh, you and everybody in the class have me. Hmm. Okay, so I'll put an example of a collocation in the chats in just a moment. Um, what would I say? Um, housing sector. Um, uh, housing sector. <laughs> devaluations. Okay, this is an example of collocations, everybody. Um, putting words together, I wrote, recently there have been housing sector devaluations in the Chinese real estate market. So the collocations would be housing sector, devalu sector devaluations. Three words pushed together, housing sector and devaluation. And in this way, your brain can um, absorb things in what are called chunks or uh, packages of memory um, to make it easier um, to recall for speaking and writing are called chunks, chunks of information in your brain, computer style, that help you quickly recall things. So I promise we'll do a lot of collocations in our writing to help you. Okay, thank yeah. you very much. Liz. Yeah, thank you. Wonderful. Uh, let's see, now I'm pronouncing not pronouncing some of these names because could you use like an English name, you know, that's a, uh, I see a wonderful cat person called a Handu. <laughs> Would you like to join us, Handu? And I'm, I'm guessing it's like a French spelling, a du, Handu, with the cat, with the tabby cat. Uh, hello. Hello. What shall we call you? Shall I call you Han or Du? Uh, can we, uh, we turn the camera? Okay, so the camera is the cat. <laughs> this is what we see right now. <laughs> yeah, hello. Hello, how are you? Uh, I'll introduce about myself. My okay. name is Mao Han, and I have an English name is Hannah. So Hannah. you can call me Hannah. Yeah. Hannah is wonderful. And I'm 15 years old. Uh, Hannah, how old are you? Um, 15 years, sir. That's fine. Thank you for joining our class. Yeah. Perfectly okay. And I want to join this class for uh, improve my writing and my grammar too. So uh, I want to study early. So when I go to university, maybe my English is better. Mm. And, hey, um, are you in the secondary school in Vietnam? Uh, maybe not. I'm in a high school in Vietnam. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, secondary school, you know, in English. Yeah. <laughs> and um, what city do you live in? Uh, I live in Yangye City in Dagnam province. Okay. Now, do you go to one of those international schools or is it a basic Vietnamese uh, high school? Uh, I have study in Minjitang Gifted High School. Yeah, Gifted High Schools. Yeah. yeah. A lot of Ms. Duke students come from Gifted High Schools, and they have Australian accents, British accents. There are students from France and Germany who join my classes, so that's why I'm asking all the questions about your high school, because there are so many different systems now in Vietnam, uh, yeah. but they produce excellent students, so... Uh, thank you for coming to my class. I really, our class, right? It's everybody's class. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Vietnam is the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. So you guys, it's everybody's class. And the Japanese do the same thing. They say our class. Okay. Any questions, Hannah? <clears throat> uh, like I, now I want to study how to write cover letters. So I can, maybe I can apply to, to be a flight attendant because I like to travel, so I want to, my dream is to be a flight attendant. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, I know some flight attendants. It's good work. It's, you get to see the world. It's actually really good. <laughs> okay, thanks, Anna. Nice. Thanks. You're welcome. Let's see, who else do we have here? I see a lot of names in um, Vietnamese, so if I mispronounce your name, I'm sorry about that. Um, let's see, Phuong Vu, would you like to try? Yes. <laughs> I would be the next. My name is Phuong, and Phuong. I know this class because my daughter that joined the writing club, 30-day uh, okay. writing challenge. Love it, yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah, I'm working for a bank in Hanoi. Hmm. My job required me to use English for talking over the phone and writing emails almost eight hours per day. Hmm. However, I have no experience in academic writing. That's hmm. why I want to attend this class. Very good. All <laughs> right, we'll focus on the academics, I promise. You'll see it in tonight's Google slide presentation I have for you. There will be plenty of academic writing for all of you. Thank you so much. Um, who is your daughter? What English name does your daughter use? Uh, Hiu Chou. And do you know the English name? Does she use an English uh, name? I think so she uses Hiu Chou. Uh -huh. Okay. Because I've been grading the 30-day uh, challenge and uh, I have about Chloe. five. Maybe Chloe. Chloe, okay. Tell her, please submit some writing because I haven't seen Chloe's writing. It's a 30-day challenge, so I want to see. I really enjoy the 30-day challenge writing. Okay, thank you so much. Let's see. Um, is uh, I love this name, Le Min Chao. I, I pronounce it Le Min Chao. Is that correct? Oh, Mr. Money is there. Hello, Mr. Money. <laughs> All right, how about Le Min Chao? Are you there? Hello? Oh, let's see, who else do we have? Um, Sao, Sao Hom. Sao Hom, are you there? Yes, yes, I'm here. Hello, okay. uh, teacher. I am uh, Sao Hom. Mm. It means Venus in oh. English. Okay. I work for Vietnam Television. 18 year mm. like a television director. Yeah. And on the other hand, I also investor and pro project director for uh, some project hospitality, mm. uh, management, resort, uh, mm. restaurant. I'm mm. 40 years now. I live in Italy because I want to learn Italian language. Mm. So, yeah, that is my uh, information. Nice uh -huh. to meet you and be able in, in the class. Are you in Italy now? Yes, now I'm here in Italy to Wonderful. learn Italian language. <laughs> how, is, how is the weather? I joined the class. I joined the class because now I'm a uh, so not not good English because I... Miss with the uh, Italian and uh, yeah. Vietnam, I want and uh, English, so that's why I want to improve and can practice more. So, yeah. um, your English sounds like Italian English, it's charming, yeah, and yeah, yeah, true, sure, <laughs> yes, yes, sorry, yes, because so uh, you, you know, like, huh? yes, because my husband is Italian also, uh -huh. and I just communication uh -huh. with him uh, yes now i love That's italian it. food do you like italian food yeah sure i'm <laughs> uh, patient with uh, italian food because ah, okay. uh, also we have the restaurant italian restaurant in taudin ah, yes when you come to Vietnam, you can try our restaurant yes excellent i'd love to I, I love italian food and i have to study vietnamese food more often because I honestly, I don't know it so well. I know Thailand food and Indian food, Japanese, Italian. I love to eat, but I have to learn more about Vietnamese food. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, let's see, yeah. is this Ta Tui Tran? Mr. Tran, Ms. Tran? 
yes. Hello. Hello. Would you like to introduce yourself? Ah, oh, there you are. Hello. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, I uh, I have information about this class from a uh, cell home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Sal is your friend. <laughs> Hello, Sal. Yes. I, 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 uh, I met her, I think, for uh, a long time. Mm. And uh, but like uh, yesterday night, she uh, she posted information about the class, and I go and check, and this is exactly what I uh, I want to learn now. Great. Very good. Because uh, for a very long time, I am, um, I didn't have chance to, you know, like, um, uh, categorize and um, to um, to see, um, check about the uh, writing. And yeah. I, here I need to update on in some of, um, uh, what in the syllabus, like uh, the write about the report, update yeah. the CV application, yeah, and uh, and to learn more about other people in in this class so yeah i can yeah, we you know like i can yeah, rewrite my um documents yeah i work in community development and um conservation uh, recently hmm. and um some um i turned back to ho chi minh city uh, last week and um and I work with Ling, the the the, the one you introduce, uh, one introduce um, first here, and um, because uh, my project just finished recently, and so I uh, I come back to my city, and mm. uh, to you know like to reconnect with my friend, uh, <laughs> in different sector to see uh, what going on in Ho Chi Minh City, uh, uh. and uh, yeah. And, uh, where where, where so were you doing like, the development? You were doing development um, research or work. Where, what place in Vietnam were you doing that? In? Yeah, I I work in uh, Quảng Bình province. Mm -hmm. I in the cave. It's um you know like it's up uh, the the Sun Sun Cave and many other systems. But okay. then this um yeah, it's in the commune and um. I have a chance to work with um, you know, like local government and the people to understand yeah. more about their forest uh -huh. and how you know, like to to join a, a, a bit of a project. Uh, mm -hmm. It's more uh, in the future. This um, I think it's about cap carbon credit. It's, mm -hmm. This is what um, Vietnam and uh, many other country uh, you know, like is um you doing now yeah okay i mean i was reading your cv that you sent it was really interesting that's why i asked you where you were working before ho chi minh city mm -hmm. actually I, I didn't send my cv yet because you didn't know someone uh, else worked in the communes i'm sorry someone else yeah, mentioned yeah. I, working I, in a commune I, and i had a lot uh, update tomorrow yeah. yeah okay it's such an interesting word the commune or the for the agricultural work okay thank you very much thank you. And let me see, did I get everybody? I know I probably missed somebody. If I didn't call on you, can you, you know, please step forward, turn on your mic and say, hey, what about me? All right. Uh, who did I miss? Because there are 18 students. I must have missed somebody. If I missed you, I'm terribly sorry. I'll wait just a minute to make sure that everybody has a chance to introduce themselves. Hi. <laughs> Who is that? Hello. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm Tang. So let me introduce myself. Okay. Um, I'm 28 years old and now I'm working in Hanoi and I work at um clinical psychologist um uh, in private com company. Um so I'm learning English and I know that uh, my writing is my weakness. So mm. it's um it's the reason that why I take part in this class and I see uh, more motivation uh, mm. with other classmates that mm. they even they are 
are still working, but they still take part in this class. So I hope that we will have a great time together to learn and to grow. <clears throat> yeah, please read the CVs and resumes. You know, you can always reach out and ask another classmate for help from the, you know, if the CV sounds interesting to you, um, you could say, can you help me with this? By the way, everybody, um, if you are in need of like an emergency English help in your writing, please contact me and I can find some time so you don't feel so much stress. If something comes to you that you must do for your company or your organization, please ask for help and we'll see what we can do. I'll arrange it with Ms. Duke. And, you know, uh, there's nothing more terrible than the stress of having to write something in English and not having any help and the AI like chat GPT or Google isn't helping you. You say, Brendan, can you help me with this? By all means, I'll help you. It should be no problem. Um, Ms. Duke maybe told you I work incredibly fast. I don't know why. I think I have an AI brain myself. But uh, in the daytime, I'm working on documents for uh, Ho Chi Minh City law firm. And these documents are incredibly precise, very detailed lawyer's documents. So helping in other areas seems somewhat easy to me. Um, and I, in Japan, I work on uh, medical um, translations. I used to uh, for doctors, and that's also very difficult. So anything you send me is okay. <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. Was there anyone else that I missed? Uh, thank you for stepping forward, Tan. Anyone else? <clears throat> Say uh, good, day. Ah, good evening, hello. everyone. Hello. Uh, my name is Hien, Phan mm. Van Hien, 30 years old, uh, 35 mm. years old, uh, based in Hanoi. Uh, I'm currently working for the World Health Organization, uh, which are focused on the public health intervention uh, in Vietnam. And uh, my um, technical work uh, is very closely relevant with um, uh, technical writing skill. So I aware of how important uh, of, uh, writing skill uh, in my work. And so uh, mm -hmm. a month ago, I, I uh, got information for from my channel, and I'm very happy to mm -hmm. join this. Uh, writing course and I hope I can learn from the teacher and and also this is mm -hmm. a um, silent opportunity to learn from the, the our classmates who mm -hmm. come from different areas. Thank Very you. Very good. Um, I have a uh, sample writing from one of the students on the IELTS course, uh, IELTS courses. And it has a little bit of medical English in it. So I think you'll enjoy that for tonight. You can see some vocabulary words there for tonight. So we'll go to the Google slides in just a moment and I'll demonstrate that for you. Okay, thank you so much for stepping forward. Am I missing anyone else? I would hate to miss somebody's introduction. You're all uh, providing wonderful introductions. It's late at night, it's 9.12 in um, Vietnam. It's 11, 12 in uh, Japan. So if you're tired after a long day's work, I apologize. I've been preparing tonight's lesson for most of today. Okay, I want to share a screen um, back to the Google Slides and we'll go back here. Um, this is a sample essay that somebody wrote. And <clears throat> I would like to read this to you because this comes from the British Council in Vietnam and internationally. They ask questions uh, uh, like this. And it's topic three. This was given to me this week. I'll keep the student's name secret, but she did a really wonderful job with this. Um, I was almost wondering if I could pick one of you to read so I can give my voice a rest. I'm still struggling with a cold. Uh, Yen, CTH, how are you? I see you there. You have your camera on. And uh, it's such a great name, Yen CTH. Yen, hello, Yen, <laughs> Yen there. Uh, how about Milin? Milin, are you there from Doc Lock? Milin? Yes, I'm here. Milin, yes. would you like hello. to read 
Would you like to read for us, Meline, this um, topic three? This is a sample of the writing that uh, um, writing level. It's just one sample, but would you care to read it? Yeah, I think we, we can put it together like one person for one paragraph. Well, okay, yeah, that's a good idea, Meline. We'll do one yeah. paragraph for each person. Okay, yeah, so yeah. you want to take paragraph number one. Yes, yes. I will try. Uh, it is sometimes a good that each video ought to contribute a set of portion of their earnings to add charitable causes. Why I appreciate, appreciate the value of donating to philanthropy, I disagree with the idea that it should be mandatory for everyone. Why, when varying financial situations uh, and spending plan are uh, taken into consideration. Very good, Meline. So yes. Meline, I highlighted taken into consideration because it's a very useful phrase um, in what's uh, critical writing or expository writing. And so I'm highlighting the, the phrases that will be useful to you. If you want to take notes, that's an excellent one. Taken into consideration is quite good. Liz, yes. the next paragraph is quite big. Would you like to read this one? Yes. Okay, I can read this uh, uh, paragraph. Okay. okay. From my uh, perspective, donating a shares of uh, an individual's earning to support charitable costs can hear charitable mm. benefits for society. Notably, this contribution may create a significant positive change. A key in support is Bill and Melinda Gates. Who contribute to all all, all billions of dollars of their wealth to develop vaccines for Africans, and in uh, doing so, they have they have helped to significantly mitigate the spread of patent epidemic such as HIV and Ebola in these impoverished countries. Uh, additionally. Participating in a, a philanthropic and by allocating a provision of one person's income may provide profound meaning to live uh, of those contributes, having a means for distribute background and overcome numerous challenges uh, to live comfortable live today. These accomplished individuals may fail compelled to extend helping hand uh, as an expression of uh, gratitude for their journey. It's not only cumulative happiness in their life, but also elevates the quality of, uh, yeah. of um, life for others. So do you see I highlighted, highlighted in red um, at least eight topics here. And these are really good transition words for your writing. For example, notably, I really like that one, notably. Significant positive change is excellent uh, collocation, combination of words. Significantly mitigate, that one is extremely important for NGO people and for medicine people. It means to improve the lives of others or improve a situation. So significantly mitigate the spread of fatal epidemics means stop really dangerous epidemics such as HIV and Ebola in Africa in the impoverished or poor countries. Um, may bring profound meaning. This is more a descriptive phrase and descriptive by that um, is descriptive writing because it's the writer's own opinion. The person who wrote this is about 30 years old and she felt that um, by donating part of your money, it gives you a sense of satisfaction. That's what she means by may bring profound meaning. Um, elevates the quality of life for others. And this um, I was reminded of one of the resumes or CVs um, on the uh, medical, um, improving the medical system in Vietnam. And I don't know how to pronounce your name, but it was, uh, the CV came uh, from uh, Pham Van Hien. Um, yes. Do you see that one elevates the quality of life for others? In your CV, you were talking about creating improvements in the healthcare system in Vietnam. 
yes. Uh, actually, we are supporting the manager pearl to mm. provide the, the uh, intervention intervention mm. to improve the quality of life for patient. For example, mm -hmm. like uh, training to provide training to health staff mm. to improve the the skill. I mean the critical skill. To, to to save more life. <clears throat> okay, I'm just typing what you're saying there. So I put that into the essay, you know, just to highlight it. Uh, interventions to improve the quality of life. Excellent yeah. uh, words there. So this is why I think words like elevates the quality of life for others is quite good. But also if you're working in NGOs and agriculture, introducing new um, improvements in agriculture for original native or indigenous populations in Vietnam, that also elevates the quality of life for others. Yeah, right. but uh, in, uh, I mean, in the healthcare perspective, uh, to be mm -hmm. honest, uh, I feel that work is quite... Uh, we use less. <laughs> we often <laughs> like uh, intervene uh, to yeah. in, provide intervention to improve the quality of life yeah. or save, uh, save life uh, of the population. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, this is a new word for me. And thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm just throwing out words here. And again, you, um, everybody, these are um, improve, elevate the quality of life as a colloquial collocation phrase you see you elevate the quality of life for others all right uh let's see i would like to call in another person uh let's see who who enjoys reading yen do you enjoy reading the yen cth you are taking notes i'm happy to see thanks yen hey yen would you like to read a paragraph uh yes okay uh, how oh are yes However, oh, there's Yen. Oh, so there are two people. Are there two people called Yen? Who is that? <laughs> Wait, okay. is it? Okay, yeah, let's do Yen there with the blue pen. Yen with the blue pen. Please go ahead. Okay, yeah, Yen, you can read with however. Yes. Mm. However, I would argue that the inclination to donate a percentage of one's earnings to charities rights among individuals. Illustratively, those, those grappling with poverty are unlikely to express their strong desire to share their money for philanthropic purposes. It's started from dedicating their time and efforts while barely making ends meet. Their individuals may assess that allocating a part of their meal income for the nations would adversely affect their daily living expenses, further exacerbating their financial burden. Moreover, people have a diverse financial priorities that take free decisions over making charitable contributions. Commonly, individuals may Priority right needs such as saving for their children's education, paying their mortgage, or covering prolonged health issue. All right. Um, do you see the highlighted red here? Further exacerbating. That's an excellent word again for NGOs for um, any number of areas. Further exacerbating means making the situation much worse where conditions continue to get bad, they go bad, bad, worse, worse, is further exacerbating their financial burden. So you have people who are having money problems and they're expected to give donations, but that would make their financial burden worse. So therefore we use further exacerbating. It's a wonderful phrase if you can use that. This phrase is very interesting to me too, this assert. I didn't use this much until I worked on my master's thesis. I needed new words to um, do what's called here. I'll put it up here called reported speech. Reported speech <clears throat> would be when you quote, um, when you quote somebody. So if you said the city manager of Hanoi said in a press conference or on television 
last week that citizens of Hanoi should use less water this summer because there isn't enough rain, you could say he asserted uh, that Hanoi residents, people who live in Hanoi, should use less water this summer. And asserted is um, reporting what he said because we're looking for substitutions for he said, he declared, he stated, said, declared, commented. So when you're writing, it's good to use a variety of words. So asserted is a really wonderful word. Assert would be, um, is stronger. It's stronger than said. Assert is stronger than said. So you say the, the city manager, I don't know if, if Hanoi has a mayor or city manager or governor, he asserted, means he said strongly um, that citizens should use less water. And it's just a situation I created, all right? So thank you for again for reading the charitable um, donations and the, the uh, children's thing here. Um, now, who wanted to read before? Was that Mr. Money? Was that you who were, you were speaking, Mr. Money? I love that name, Mr. Money. Mr. Money, did you want to read the last part, the conclusion? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, yes. Individual may prioritize, prioritize this such as, such as saving for their children's education, paying their mortgage, or covering rollouts. How issue six months to their expense constitutes a significant fraction of their income, and as a result, their individual must carefully allocate their earnings to these necessities to ensure their life and future are sustainable. In conclusion, why I agree that contributing a portion of one in one's income for charitable purpose would bring about enorm enormous advantage to society. I maintain that compelling everybody to participate in philanthropy is unrealistic due to different in contributors, financial circumstances, and personal priorities. Yeah, very good, Mr. Money. Do you see in her conclusion, she really puts it all together. It's a wonderful conclusion. Now, in reading these two pages, some class members say, but what is the, what are most of these words about? I don't understand a lot of these words. So I could take the in conclusion and um, I can make that into simpler English. What she's saying is um, for people who are worried about money, contributing part of your salary, your income, um, can really help society, but people have to do it with their own needs. They can't uh, follow a 10% standard like they do in um, Islamic culture. Like I lived in Saudi Arabia, three times a year, families have to give 10% of their money to poor people. That's the traditional Muslim law. Um, so she's saying there should be no percentage. You People should give what they can. And if you force people to give a certain amount, she refers to this as unrealistic. That it's a nice idea, but people can't really do it according to a percentage, right? So don't follow percentages for every family. Each family has to decide how much it can give or a single person has to decide how much they can give. Okay. Um, another phrase is constitute a significant fraction. This is also an excellent word, constitute a significant fraction. Other constitutes um, constitute a major portion to global warming. Um, so for example, I could say methane gas. Okay, so this is recent research. I don't have the link for this, but I was um, reading a news story or watching television. Methane gas from garbage areas all around the world 
um, constitute a major portion um, to global warming. Uh, methane gas is much more dangerous than CO2. So this is a new topic. Um, satellites above the earth are showing the methane release from places in India where the cities like Mumbai and New Delhi are growing really big. There's an incredible amount of methane coming from the garbage dumps and researchers were surprised how much it was. So it could be very dangerous for climate change. So there's another example of constitute a major portion. I don't know if we could use constitute in financial English, finance. It's an interesting question. Can you use that in finance or banking? Banking. Hmm. Okay, any questions on this is just a sample essay from the um, <clears throat> IE, ILETS, I-L-E-T-S. It's one page. It's an excellent level. Um, if you see my, did I put the person's name here? I don't wanna show you the person's name because it's private. Okay, but my comments were, this is excellent. This is really incredible writing. And I only did some minor changes to this person's writing. It's a woman who wrote this for me um, two days ago or three days ago, I forget which. Okay, any questions to that? All right, I'd like to go back to the Google Slides to show you, to answer the question, what are we gonna do with this course? What are we gonna do here? So. Uh, one moment, and here are the goals and objectives. Okay, so goals and objectives. Uh, all right, um, descriptive versus critical writing. We're doing some of that already. Um, as an example of descriptive versus critical writing, some of you who work in television and in tourist development would use more descriptive writing to describe a tourist area. But if you wanted to talk about the impacts of tourism on a region, uh, you would probably switch to critical writing to argue good things and bad things about it. Okay, then next, grammar and sentence structure, vocabulary and word choice, and organization and cohesion. Um, in reading the student, the young students' essays in, um, amongst the students in Vietnam, I have to say organization and cohesion is very good amongst the young students. Um, this is sometimes a problem with people doing writing. Um, sometimes there are sentences or paragraphs that don't fit the writing, but I really don't see this in the writing. I've been grading um, writing assignments in, for Vietnamese students for three months now, this organization and cohesion isn't too much of a problem. So we'll uh, focus on these three, I think, are most important. Let me go to the next one. What do these terms mean? Descriptive versus critical writing. Can I ask Golf from Hanoi, can you do some reading for us? Because I'm just going to drink a little tea. I'm having problems with my voice. Um, Yes, Would thank you. you. Yeah. Is it okay to read? Yes, of course. Uh, <laughs> so from the title to... Yeah, sure, from the title. Okay, so until when? Where? Um, how much would you like to read? Could you read one, okay. two, three? Okay, I've been staying with my, uh, my classmates, so I've been reading until duty, okay? okay. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. But what do all the term mean? Let's... Mm -hmm. As my each area of study individually, that critic versus critical writing. Seen many students in our adult writing class are involved in the so social sciences. We win in Chori Bloom taxonomy for critical writing to assist you in writing stronger papers or reports for the various organizations where you are employees or graduate school programs. Mm -hmm. Grammar and sentence structure. Sentences demonstrate accurate use of grammar of various sentence structures. As I mentioned previously, I am currently teaching young students basic writing. They are somewhat confused at the time order in their writing. They switch from the past to present to future tenses frequently, and there is confusion in their relaying of event to the reader. 
in our first sessions, I will check assignment for a consistent time, referent for the very important verb tenses. For some of the CV you have submitted, I change some of the present tense verbs to the past tense verb to reflect your previous employment responsibility and duties. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gulf. That's excellent. Wonderful reading. So, yeah, in the CVs, you know, um, some people uh, were talking about work in the early 2000s. They would say, um, I uh, perform audits for accounting, and I changed that to performed with ED, performed, because that was about 15 years ago for some of you. So that's what I mean by changing the tenses. Yeah, for my CV also. You, you saw the changes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Was that okay, Golf? Yes, it's correct. It yeah, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. I enjoyed it. That's a, it was a wonderful resume, by the way. I enjoyed reading that. Mm. Hannah, are you there? Hannah with the cat. Hannah with the big cat. Yes. Hello, Hannah. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Good. Would you like to read for sentence structures? <laughs> okay. I read it. Yeah, here it is for sentence structures. And three ones to I love strawberries, right? Yeah. Okay. For sentence structures, I will also correct some common errors I sometimes encounter in the younger student writing. For example, Many students use run-on sentence with comma splices. Mm. An example for these sentence look like this. I went to my aunt's house last night to celebrate my cousin's birthday. There was a beautiful cake with strawberry. I like strawberry a lot and I was very happy. This sentence needs to be divided into at least two possible Possibly three sentences. Uh, the dated sentence could read like this. I went to my aunt's house last night to celebrate my cousin's birthday. And I was surprised to see a beautiful birthday cake on the table. The cake had strawberry on top which make me very happy because I love strawberries. Yeah, so do you see how I took all of those commas it just the sentence keeps going and going and going, and I yeah. broke it up into two sentences. Japanese students also have this problem. I think in Asia, China, Taiwan, Japan, um, Vietnam, there's a flowing traditional style where sentences could go on and on and just put little marks, commas. And that's why that happens. So as English teachers, we try to teach students just to end things with periods not to make the sentences too long. But as many of you who are have done graduate work in Vietnam or foreign universities, you can see that in academic writing, some of those sentences go on really long when they're trying to describe something difficult. Um, some academic researchers write an entire paragraph and gram grammar wise, it's okay. But for if you're trying to study that or use it in your research, it can be really long. So I, I try to break things up into smaller sentences because smaller sentences have power to them, right? Yeah, so that is my problem. I was ah, you're honest, Hannah. Okay, thank yes, you. Thank you. We'll work on it. Thank you for reading, Hannah. Wonderful. Yes. Okay, now. The writing, reading, and speaking trio, someone said they're in high school, and uh, they said, I really want to reinforce my speaking, writing trio. Who was the high school student? Can you tell me who that was? She said, I'm 16 or 15 years old. Do you know who that was? Because this is for you. <laughs> this page is for you. <laughs> Can you please uh, tell me who was that said, I really want to reinforce my writing and reading skills? Do you know who this is? Who is our high school student? Can you speak up? Is it Limin? So, well, all right. Can I go to the person in Italy, Sao Hong? 
see Hello. the writing oh, again okay. yeah. the writing reading and speaking tool I think it's really important to combine the three building plus of learning the English language from the earliest possible start starting studying time on three areas reading, speaking, and writing train for skill constantly and the process of learning English as a spoken spoken language become far more successful in the Rochette. I teach young learning to our organization and CSN and some the students provide really wonderful one to one to two paragraph descriptive AZ on the Whitley Church Street. Stop it. Continue uh, finish. Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. So I am very much impressed with the quality of the work, and I would like to share an essay with you so that you can see from yes. uh, an early age, students are combining their writing, reading, and speaking skills to become semi-fluent to fully fluent in English. The objective for this lesson was to describe the locations of things in spatial order. So in their room or in their city, where are things? Tony, are you there? Yes, teacher. Tony, in my classes with the young students, um, do you work with the student Neken, N-E-K-E-N? -E -E He's a very intelligent young boy. Yes, teacher. Yeah, would you like to read Naken? I put Naken's essay here because it's really, really wonderful. Called the, I don't know, Dal Don? Would you like to read it all, Tony? Is that okay? Yes, sure, teacher. A student essay with roughly three paragraphs. Dal Don Spring Flower Festival. In Vietnam, there are lots of beautiful places where everyone can visit during the Tet holidays. There are places such as Book Street, Wing Hai Flower Street, Taodan Spring Flower Festival. Most of them are filled with flowers and everywhere it is beautiful. But in my opinion, Taodan Spring Flower Festival is my favorite and I recommend everyone to visit it. After entering the gate, the first thing we see is the state of five little dragon wearing our yang and dancing. Behind it is the place where they display Lumeria. Both of Lumerias are everywhere. They are from the individual who has entered the contest. The winners have a card tied around the tree's neck so people can tell which one has won which prize. Behind and a little bit from the left, of the blue mirror display is uh, a pre coach blossom display. In this display, there is one special character. It is also a pre coach blossom, but it is bigger and more beautiful than the rest. Because of that, it has a special title. The special character turning left and going backwards. A little bit is a display of art. Mm. There are two sections there, the crown section and the sky sections. They are different colors of art there. Some of them are also pretty big. From the right of the plumera display are the bonsai sections. Each bonsai is so in a different topic, but every one of them is beautiful. From the left of the mirror display is the playground. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Tony. So is it, it's amazing writing, but I think Tony would agree with me that Nakin is a very intelligent boy. He's only nine or 10 years old. He's really well behaved in our lessons. Um, he even makes me laugh because two weeks ago he said, teacher, I think some other students are copying my work because he, he, he writes really well for a nine or 10 year old. 
Also, one of the problems with the younger students is they use AI too much and they just copy and paste things into their homework assignments. And everybody, that's so easy to see. So I mentioned that because if you feel really frustrated if I give you a writing assignment, if you have to use AI, chat, GPT, or Google, by all means, you can take the ideas, but just reword, <laughs> excuse me, reword them or paraphrase, mean use your own language, and then you can change it, right? Because some of these writing assignments might be very challenging. And so just, you know, go back to the original and say, I want to change this to make it my feelings. Um, and so Nathan, I know that he's giving us original work, submitting original work, because there are spelling errors throughout his thing. Oh, what you see here on the Flower Festival is I've corrected all the English and the spelling, so it's perfect. But I can see that Nakin is making some mistakes in his spelling. Therefore, I know Nakin did not copy this from ChatGPT. So as a teacher, I'm really happy to see that. It's wonderful. Okay, I want to pick one more person to read the last part. Uh, let's see... Uh, Mi Lin, would you like to read the last part? Yes. Mm. Yeah, so I will start from here. There, there are a lot of different games there, but my favorite is the Go Tricycle. We use a tricycle to run, to run around a circle. It feels like racing to me. It is so fun that I played there twice. However, there are some disadvantages. It is usually crowded to make matter worse. People taking pictures need a lot of space, so it reduces the space rapidly. And there is a, there is a line to stop people from going near the tree, which reduces the space even more. In conclusion, no, do I need to read that? Yeah. Would like to. Yeah, okay. okay. Darden Spring Flower Festival has so many displays to see. There are flowers everywhere. The park has stands where you can buy food and drinks to, re to recharge. Cool you down at the sea. It has a good condition, so everybody wants to visit it and it gets crowded. But if you don't like crowdedness, then this is one of the best places you have ever been to. <laughs> so what do you think, Milan? It's a nine-year-old boy. Do you think it's a nice description of the flower festival? <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, it sounds really beautiful. I don't know this flower festival, so I'm wondering what, you know, does anyone else know this famous flower festival? It's in uh, Taodan, is that right? Yes. Taodan? Yes. So I think... <laughs> This is really real description about the town and spring flowers. <laughs> Isn't he a wonderful? Yeah, yes. I think he has a talent as a writer, don't you? Yes. Uh, for a nine-year-old boy. <laughs> very well organized. So hmm. you can follow the flow of the festival from yes, the yes. beginning to the end. Hmm. Yeah. And the advantages and disadvantages when you join in this uh, town and spring festival mm. really interesting this is pure descriptive descriptive writing it doesn't need critical writing really um it's only description but it's a wonderful description i think he did a, a, does a great job of it um the power in his writing this boy nick ken's writing is he he lets us see in our adult world he he invites us back into a child's view of things and i that's why i think it's really magic i really love it mm. Mm. I'm glad you could see it too, Golf. That it's just, just good writing. Mm. Golf, do you think he has a future in writing tourist information for an event, maybe? Mm. Yeah, for him, I think I, it's very impressive for this kind yeah. of uh, descriptive uh, writing. For me, yeah. I think I cannot do like that. I, I try to inspire the young students by saying, you know, I think there's a future here for you in writing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay, so this chart you see, this is the uh, Bloom's taxonomy. This Bloom was a professor at the University of Chicago <clears throat> in the 1950s. It was uh, almost 70 or 80 years ago. And so for academic writing, he created this pyramid, this colorful 
evaluation, synthesis, analysis, application, comprehension, knowledge. And this is a little confusing when you first look at it, but <clears throat> what it means is ideas are logically organized. Tony, can you read this part here? Because I'm having a little bit of problem coughing. Thanks. Yes, teacher. Ideas are logically organized <laughs> with clear introduction, body, and conclusion. Coherence is achieved through effective use of transition words. Transition words are highly important in Bloom's taxonomy, and we will use these transition words as much as possible in critical thinking. Now, uh, critical writing is that the taxonomy or pyramid structure looks like evaluation, synthesis, analysis, application, comprehension, and knowledge. Yeah. So if we go back to the student who wrote the, um, <clears throat> oh, let's see where it is. Not here, but uh, let me just uh, stop the share here. And um, there was, uh, I've closed the document, but before I um, had a uh, sample of the writing where the person used um, the, um, uh, let's see, quickly find it here. Uh, Okay. Yeah, I found it. Okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> so using the transition words, this was the um, thing we read before, words like notably, and she used a transition word here. However, it's very easy. You guys know that one. But if you look at this one, illustratively, this is a fantastic word. Illustratively means I will show you by example illustratively because it's connected to a picture so it creates an almost strong image in your writing illustratively um, it's both critical and descriptive writing so she wrote illustratively those grappling with poverty it's a big word it just means for example for example those grappling with poverty are unlikely to express so she, what she means like as an illustration as an example wonderful word uh, on this one so those are her transition words. However, it's kind of basic, but um, from my perspective, it's pretty good too. It's starting a paragraph from my perspective. Okay, <clears throat> so there's that. And I just want to go back to the Google Slides here one more time um, to here. Okay, so in that sample essay that I um, showed you uh, a couple of times, and I want to show you, this is called the interplay, the interplay between um, descriptive and critical writing. So if someone could read this for us, and I'm trying to allow just about everyone to have a chance to read tonight. Um, Liz, are you still there? Liz from Hanoi. Yes, absolutely. And Liz, then, would you like to read this this uh, page here, the interplay? Yes, okay. Uh, the interplay between descriptive and critical writing. As um, I mentioned previously from your CVs, I can see that many of you have worked with the development of tourism or agriculture in the area that have sensitive ecosystem and in the various population to make an area attractive to tourism, descriptive English is usually used. A place or a region is described to make it sound and take things for tourists to visit. A new generation of tourists are intellectually curious about in the various countries and remote areas. And uh, descriptive words can uh, assist in creating how tenant interests in uh, um, interested in a tourist destination. However, critical writing may have a place in policy cycle if a frequently visited tourist destination is uh, heavily visited. Then a critical assessment will be begin to use quality qualitative analysis works and data to assess potential damage. 
Fortunate first homework assessment. I would like to use a topic uh, from the IELTS. The question is. Okay, you ready for the question, Liz? Oh, I'm sorry. So there's the question. But first, Golf, you had a question. I saw Golf, you raised your hand. Golf, please ask your question. Yeah, so I have a question regarding because you have showed the Bloom taxonomy. So yeah. I see six majors in your rectangle. Hmm. So just the question, uh, and uh, the first time I saw it. Yeah. So what does this mean in general? So when we write uh paragraph or something, so you have to follow this kind of major, six so, major. Or how let me you show you. Um, I got that chart from. Um, I got that chart. It's a great question. Um, golf. Let me see. I'm just trying to get my uh, Google thing here. My uh, thing. Um, I'm going to go to chat GPT that I did the research on the Bloom's taxonomy today. And <clears throat> they have these words here. That yes, are because I don't, understand, I don't understand how yeah. to follow the text jungle. So this is the bottom to, mm. to the top or from the top to bottom. Yeah, how does this work? <laughs> how to describe this? Yeah. It's, <clears throat> the pyramid, what that colorful pyramid is showing is from research to writing to publication, but it's really focused on um, the Bloom's taxonomy is critical thinking steps to get to your conclusion. But I'm, I'm just looking for that now. Ah, yes, I got it. Okay, so I got this from ChatGPT and I don't mind sharing this with you because uh, it's difficult to remember all of the Bloom's taxonomy. So I'm gonna start here. I wrote the question, can you provide translate transition and analytical words found in Bloom's taxonomy? The transition words were in that essay. And then ChatGPT is always so happy to help. It says, certainly Bloom's taxonomy categorizes levels of cognitive skills, does not inherently contain transition or analytical words as it primarily focuses on cognitive processes this is kind of heavy psychological stuff. It means how we process information to see if something is true or not true. However, educators often use transition and analytical words to facilitate uh, learning and assessment aligned with Bloom's taxonomy. Um, here are some transition and analytical words uh, commonly used in conjunction with Bloom's taxonomy. So, <clears throat> Remembering something in your writing, you could say recall, recognize, identify, list, define, label, understanding, explain, summarize, interpret, paraphrase, describe, apply, use, demonstrate. So I'm going to send you all a copy of this in our Zalo website um, area um, that we're using for communication because these are really important. I'll do that tonight. So you don't have to take notes on this. I'll copy and paste this all in. But how this connects is if we go back to um, the presentation here, to this screen here, this is the evaluation synthesis analysis application. This is how we process information in our brains. Again, it's overly psychological, but um, in critical writing, you go through all of these steps um, in presenting something. Does that make sense, Golf? Yes, it's okay. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank you. So for our class, you know, I really think all of these evaluations, synthesis, analysis, application, comprehension, knowledge, we're going to use all of these. Um, and when we do use them, um, as a teacher, I'm always good, always good about bouncing back to something like this and saying, do you, students, do you remember we're in the evaluation phase right now? We're doing a little analysis. We're um, checking our comprehension, our knowledge. So I will always springboard back to this to review it again and again for you. It's actually a really good way to organize your thinking too. Okay, so are you ready for our topic? Now, I wrote this for you, but I understand you're all really busy working people, many of you. Um, some are still in school. Some are um, doing business, you know, so 
If you can do one paragraph, that's great. If you can do two paragraphs, good. If you can do a whole page, that's really good. Um, we're not going to grade you on this. I'm just going to send you constant feedback to you students so you can make corrections. And at the beginning of each class, I'll choose maybe two or three samples that I think are really interesting for your responses. But for our first homework assignment, and I hope it's okay to give you homework, um, it's ecotourism or ecotourism. It, it depends. Ecotourism is British. Ecotourism is American English. Ecotourism. May I, may I ask, Tony, can you read the ecotourism again? <laughs> so, so my voice is having a little bit of difficulty tonight. <clears throat> sure, teacher. Thank you, Tony. Ecotourism. Ecotourism often involves visiting remote and fractured ecosystems, which arise concern about the impact on local cultures and indigenous communities. What problems can this cause? How can these problems be solved? Mm. For this type of question, continue, teacher. Yeah, please, Tony. Yeah. For this type of question, you can decide how long a response you would like to provide in writing. Many of you have busy work schedules so if you can only manage two paragraphs then that is perfectly acceptable if you can provide a full page that would be great but you will leave it up to you for this assignment you can approach the entire subject with your personal feeling through descriptive writing however some of you are familiar with this topic and you are free to include some critical analysis with a referee or two online article demonstrating the damage that you can be done. Yeah, so too many tourists to a really beautiful area of Vietnam, perhaps in a newspaper or online website, you've read of some damage to some area. Let me show you what I found this evening um, in relation to this. Um, so, I, I like to go to these islands. The last time I went to these islands was 30 years ago. This is in Indonesia. So here's the island of Bali. And I think more and more Vietnamese people are going to Bali for vacations because it seems to me it's only two and a half or three hours from Vietnam to get to Indonesia. It's very fast. So you can fly from Ho Chi Minh Airport or Hanoi. And the airport is Den Pasar. And then there's this little beach called Padang Bai and you take a ferry to Lombok, and then these are called the Gili Islands. And I, I went here 30 years ago, and the island for snorkeling looked like this. It was beautiful, coral snorkeling. Um, my friends and I stayed only two days because the water wasn't clean for drinking, and some of the tourists were getting sick from the bad water. Um, but recently I've been reading articles. This is what the coral looks like now because millions and millions of tourists are now going to the Gili Islands. Um, many cruise ships stop here in Padang Bai and then they immediately change here and they go to do snorkeling and scubing, scuba diving and they, they use power boats. So they've completely damaged this coral. So this would be an instance of ecotourism um, where you maybe there are efforts to try to create new coral. You can do that as an activity on your holiday vacation. Okay, does the topic sound interesting to you as we finish for tonight? Would you like to try a paragraph or two students to write? Golf, yes. what do you think? Yes, All right. we try. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. Golf, I have to admit, I, I was thinking of you and three other students are involved in tourism and golf courses and uh, things like this. So <laughs> this is why I chose this one. So go court in, uh, yeah, I think go court related to ecotourism as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah the, the problem with these Gili Islands that I showed you here is they also built some golf courses on these islands and they're using too much fresh water. So yeah. that's it's an issue, yeah. And so sometimes it's related also to the, um, in how to say the word, so the material to for the insect. So chemical. Um, the oh, chemical, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. The pesticides. Pesticides, Pesticide, yeah. So it influences also the water sources. Okay. Quality, I think. 
Mm. Let me uh, write that in the chat, the pesticides. That so you guys is. can check that word we use, pesticides, to kill the insects. Yeah. Uh, to be careful. Cause, yeah, because the pesticides always run off into the oceans too, right? Okay, Milin wants more about Bloom's taxonomy. So uh, Milin, I'm going to put that in our group for um, Yalo. I keep saying yeah. Zalo, but Ms. Duke said Brennan is Yalo because <laughs> my pronunciation on Z is Zalo, but it's Yalo. So Milin, I promise I'll put a lot more information about it because I only introduced it briefly and it's it's very com it's complicated, but it's also really helpful for you guys to learn uh, Bloom's taxonomy, how to use it in your writing to create really good writing. Right? Yeah. So maybe it's a good it's a good question. Okay, any other questions? I can take more questions if you like. We're a little over time, and it's ten oh four in Vietnam. I, I wonder if you're going to have pizza tonight, like all of our young students, <laughs> just pizza maniacs. Yes, question please. Okay, so also I'll restate the homework in the um, Yalo uh, chat area. I'll paste the homework in again for you so you can see. Okay, so at any rate, it was wonderful meeting all of you. I hope you have a really good uh, Saturday. Saturday, I'm going to teach some classes. With the, with the young students. I call them young students. They're children, but they're really intelligent and they're gifted. So I don't like to call them children because when Tony and I speak to some of these kids, it's like speaking to a young adult. It's kind of, it's, it's shocking really. <laughs> it's a new generation of young Vietnamese geniuses, I think, right? Okay. So any uh, questions from anybody? Yeah, uh, I, got, I have a question. Okay, please. Yeah. Um. So I I wonder, uh, could you please share because we uh we learned um want uh every week and how um you know for example today uh, I wonder what uh, the the topic that we learned today is about introduction to writing and you know the in between the week how we can um. Hmm. If we have like any um, okay work to do, uh, like we uh, we have some link to research, and I also send the uh, the question and uh, like to to read the your slide and uh, how um, in, this, in this class how we can like connect with each other and uh, you know like um I would um, yeah I recommend use the Yalo to connect with each other. You can use that as a chat group. Um, it's perfectly fine to use that. And then I can answer your questions in YALO and you can communicate with each other and I'll put the homework assignments. Um, I also want to offer a, a review because this is a 90 minute class and you maybe think, oh, wow, we really covered a lot of stuff today. So I'm almost wondering if I could uh, create a PDF or a, a Word document so you can see what I covered tonight. So you can review it if you'd like. Yeah, uh, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Very good suggestion. Okay, everybody, shall we finish? And please check YALO, and I will put everything you need to know in YALO, um, a review of tonight's work and the homework, and I can answer any questions. And then if you finish the homework during the week, anytime, it's, it's to your... Uh, leisure, meaning you, whenever you have the time because you're busy workers. So tonight is Friday night, Friday night, all the way until next Friday evening, you can send your homework anytime I can correct it. If mm -hmm. I correct it and you want to send it again, that's fine too. Um, with your corrections, that's, that's good too. So I'm very flexible as a teacher, you can do all of that. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome, Golf. I hope we have a great Good weekend. Night. Good night. Thank Good night. You. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone. Thank you, teacher. We'll see you next time.